Um, our first speaker is Nicolo. So please add Nicolo. Yes. Hi, Nicolo. Hi, Martin. How are you doing? I'm fine. And you? Pretty good. A little anxious, but I, I think uh, is, uh, don't <laughs> is worry. because of the talk. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so from where are you streaming from? Italy, Milan. Italy. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah. I actually, maybe I go next week to Milan. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Think. Maybe it's still open, but maybe one week holiday. So you nice. talk. You talk is about Spark and Azure Databricks. Wonderful. So right. Please yeah. go on. Okay. So, can you see my slides? Um, the technical. Oh, now, now everything is perfect. Okay. I'll start then. So uh, I'm Nicolo Giso, and the title of this presentation, as you can see here in these first slides, is from telemetry data to CSV with Python, Spark, and Azure Databricks. Uh, in Tenova, we are using this stack to transform the telemetry data we retrieve from uh, the field from our machineries in uh, easily manageable CSV uh, data files. Uh, before diving into the details, I will show you now the agenda. So first of all, I will give you a little bit of background about myself and Tenova. Then I will show you what are the main data application of uh, the data we record and retrieve for the machineries. Then we uh, present the architecture and the stack we uh, apply to transform this telemetry data in CSV file. Then we have some uh, screenshot of code just to see in, uh, in detail what happens in the code. And finally, I will close up with uh, uh, the orchestration of these notebooks and uh, a final conclusion on what are our next steps. So let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Nicolò from Italy, as I said before. I work for Tenova Company. There will be a slide uh, in a couple of seconds about it. Uh, and my role is a data scientist. And my main interests are books, TV series, and of course, data. You shouldn't expect nothing fancy from this presentation, since uh, uh, you can see that my uh, PowerPoint level is pretty low. Uh, I started to work in Tenova in 2017, and uh, uh, I support uh, the te uh, Tenova digital team in the implementation of the industrial IoT platform. And today, I'm really, I'm really proud to be here at EuroPython to show you a part uh, of uh, this platform we implemented uh, with Databricks. Tenova is a Tekin Group company a worldwide partner for sustainable, innovative, and reliable solutions in the metals and in the mining industries. In Tenova, we design and develop solutions that help companies to reduce costs, save energy, limit environmental impact, and improve working conditions. Throughout the years, Tenova engineered and installed at the customer plants a huge number of machineries and devices. Here you can see some numbers and figures just to give you an idea of this. In the context of Industry 4.0, we decided that it was time to leverage all the data that those machineries produce during their uh, time working. And so we uh, devised the so called Tenova Industrial IoT platform that leveraging Microsoft Azure allows us to collect data, analyze them, and uh, make some machine learning models, and also show the results and the monitoring of those variables to our customer. The five pillars of our platform are the field gateway, that is the physical actual device that collects the data from the plants, then we have the Tenova Analytics Engine and the Machine Learning Model Repositories that help us to find out some new information and extract insightful knowledge from the big amount of data that we collect. Then we have the Tenova Digital Portal that allows to configure the variables to collect. And finally, we have the Tenova Wide that is our proprietary dashboarding tool system that allow us to create dashboard to show the status of the machineries and how the different variables are uh, uh, moving over time. 
So uh, basically, we have uh, uh, this Denova Edge that can read data from any uh, plant data source that can be a PLC or a SQL database. They can write data both on premise on, on our platform. The data transfer is secured by design and this can guarantee the privacy and the security for our customer. The application of the data uh, that we retrieve from the field are three mainly that are monitoring, data analysis and machine learning models. For the definition of the monitoring dashboard, we shouldn't uh, manipulate too much the data. So the format is okay, but for our data analysis and machine learning models building is necessary to transform uh, the files that we retrieve from the field into a manageable format, especially for the data analysis that is carried out by our process engineers that have all the knowledge about the process information and can gain insights if the data is provided in a meaningful way. To give you an idea, this is a sample of uh, the file that we retrieve is a JSON lines file in which each line is a record. And we have a variable that is defined by the an item and name that you can see here, for instance, speed and an item ID that is unique. And then we have its value and the time at which this value was recorded. That's the face of our uh, engineers when they uh, have <laughs> to look at the first time uh, at those data. And we uh, immediately decided to find a way to format them in a proper way. Before doing that, we define uh, a set of four requirements. Of those CSVs files that we uh, will provide to our engineers, each file should contain the data for a single device only one file for device per day should be available. And uh, so if there are two, for any reason, two parts uh, of the day divided in a, in two different CSV files, they should be merged. Then we guarantee one row per second. And that's uh, a nice feature to have, especially in forward filling scenarios. And finally, we want to have the midnight row. With midnight row concept, uh, we mean the fact that the midnight row is present and has the value from the previous day. So if a variable didn't change uh, value, let's say in the last uh, two hours of a day, we don't lose information uh, because we can fill with the last record value of the previous day. So now let's see the architecture. This is all the flow. We start from the JSON lines uh, that I showed you before, and then there is this uh, series of uh, eight uh, Python Databricks notebooks that transform the data. The runtime is Spark uh, 2.4, but uh, this is the phase of our intern looking at this architecture. So I decided to make something I hope that is a little clearer. So. Uh, the fourth uh, notebook uh, has the task to uh, remove the information from, from previous run. Since the, this job, uh, these eight uh, steps are run daily, that means uh, uh, cleaning away all the information from the previous day. Then we have the, uh, the first uh, real notebook, that is P the pivot notebook, then transform the JSON lines into CSV with variables as columns and UTC timestamp as index. Then we uh, have uh, the merge uh, notebook that takes the data saved in the Azure uh, uh, data lake by the pivot notebook and merge them together to have a unique CSV file for the same device in a given day. Then we save the result to a data lake and update last value uh, just uh, writes to SQL database the last value that defines for each variable into a table that then can be retrieved from uh, the film in night uh, notebook that retrieves the last value of the previous day and fills the midnight timestamp. At this point, the, the file that we build is saved again to the Azure Data Lake and the notebook pad timestamp is just used to be sure that there is uh, uh, one line uh, per second. At this point, the CSV is saved and the manipulation is over. But since we have the data already in a tidy format, we decide to implement the Compute KPI notebook that calculates uh, basic KPI such as mean, minimum, and maximum, and save this information in a Cosmos DB collection that can be later retrieved by our dashboard. 
to close up, we have a sanity check uh, notebook that just control the, the, the logs for any error and uh, uh, through a logic apps reports via mail the status of uh, the whole run. So let's see a little bit of code. But before I want to uh, highlight the fact that there, is, there are variable like speed that you see in line one and two that change uh, value within the same second, just the decimals are different in the two lines. And uh, then there are uh, the variable like scrap image that are complex uh, uh, variables, meaning that the, uh, the value has more than one single value as in the previous case. Like for the case of scrap image, we have entered the end category. This is usually the result of a uh, SQL query. Okay. So now we have the pivot notebook. The core function of this notebook is the transform uh, data frame function that takes the, the file, uh, the data frame read via Spark with JSON and uh, uh, selects uh, some, uh, some of, uh, of the columns uh, that has built using uh, uh, transforming the UTC timestamp and then uh, uh, selecting that and name that in ID. For the values, it displays and parse the value with an uh, user defined function in order to have all the content readily available. At this point, we create in line 12 the variable, uh, a new column called variable, in which we uh, put together the item ID, the item name, and uh, if necessary, the, suffix, uh, the key as a suffix to this variable. At this point, we select UTC timestamp variable and value, and then we are ready to go to the pivoting part. Uh, uh, we cannot directly pivot our uh, value because we have too many, uh, it can be the case of the speed variable, for instance, in which we have more than one value per second and we want to have an, uh, one, just one value. So we just truncate uh, the UTC timestamp to the second, and then uh, we have to pivot. The thing is that we tested uh, many times the aggregation with last, but what happened is that it gave different result with the same data because sometimes uh, it didn't give the real last value. So to overcome this issue, we use uh, the following trick. We built a window that partition on variable and the truncated uh, UTC timestamp and order by the UTC timestamp. Then we select just uh, for uh, for each uh, window that we built, just uh, the first column. And at this point, uh, we are ready to group by the truncated UTC, pivot on the variable, and finally taking the value. We use last, but we could use whatever aggregating function since there is just one value left. At this point, we make just a, bit of lit, uh, a little bit of renaming, and then the data frame is ready to, to be saved. The output is uh, this one, as you can see. And uh, uh, then there is the merge data frame, the merge notebook that basically takes uh, files from the same name, from the same device and concatenates the thing together. Is also uh, make sure that there are no duplicates UTC timestamp. That's when there is between one run and the other that there is a common seconds. And so we have just to merge this second in a unique row, let's say. Then the result is saved and with the update last values uh, notebook, uh, we uh, uh, retrieve for each column, the last value and its timestamp with the find last value column that's possible. Indeed, we apply it in the generate last value dict function that takes all the columns of the data frame, except of course the UTC timestamp and builds a dictionary having as a key, the column name and uh, as a value, the last known value for the column and the timestamp of this uh, uh, of this value found. At this point, uh, we have to write to the SQL database to store uh, the result we just found. And uh, uh, the table is this one with the column timestamp, item ID, value, device ID, and item name. And here you can see the first query at line two is used to look for uh, any entry of item ID and item name with the same day. And if there is any entry with a timestamp that comes before the one we just found with the previous function, we can apply the update function to change the value and update the timestamp. Otherwise, we insert altogether the value we found inside the table. 
then uh, we arrive to the filming night uh, notebook in which uh, using a pandas read sql we read the table we have seen before and uh, retrieve the uh, for uh, each device the item id the item name and the value for the, uh, for the day before and build a structure that will help us to fill the midnight row indeed in the update uh, data data frame we use the data frame that we read through uh, spark uh, read csv and the dictionary we built to uh, to update the midnight row indeed if the midnight row exists so there is a line containing hour minute and second with all zeros uh, we are going to fill the null value with the information retrieved before otherwise we insert the new line and the value we just got from the table. Finally, there is this part, the timestamp uh, uh, notebook that has the only job of uh, be sure that there are no uh, empty, uh, there are no skipping seconds between uh, uh, two consecutive lines. And that's done using uh, uh, this Spark range uh, and the join. So the data now is ready to to be analyzed by our uh, process engineers and our data scientists. But since we are already here, we decided to uh, build uh, uh, another notebook that basically computes uh, on all the uh, files we have available for the day, uh, some basic KPI that they can be the mean, the median, the absolute, uh, the maximum value or the minimum. And storing this information along with the item name and the item D saves this as a document in a Cosmos DB where then they, they can be uh, later retrieved for uh, visualization. So uh, to close up, I want to show you our uh, way to use uh, Databricks. We actually uh, usually develop a new feature uh, on Visual Studio Code locally. And uh, uh, then when we are ready to push our changes to Azure DevOps, there is a release pipeline that actually is uh, able to uh, map the, uh, the branch uh, structure to a folder structure in which the, for, the, for each branch correspond uh, a folder. So you can see here the main branch is mapped to the main folder and the dev branch with the dev uh, folder. This allows us to experiment with new feature without impacting the production scenario. To orchestrate all of these uh, notebooks, uh, at first uh, we used Azure Databricks because it's in the same environment as the notebooks. But it has, has a main drawback that has little flexibility in, uh, in thinking about future developments. So we decided to migrate to Azure Data Factory that has easy customization. And thanks to its uh, intuitive uh, UI, it allows us uh, to uh, better orchestrate uh, all our uh, steps. Uh, furthermore, Azure Data Factory uh, gives us uh, some flexibility in replacing maybe in the future some notebooks with some other services because of performance or if we need something particular that is already implemented without a notebook. So to conclude, uh, what are our next steps to uh, develop and make better our solution? We want to upgrade in the next weeks to uh, Spark 3 so we can fully leverage uh, Koalas actually. Then we want to extend the computation of the KPI, not to just the basic one, but ad hoc KPI uh, for each device. And finally, we improve, want to improve the performance of uh, the Compute KPI notebook, the last one that I just showed you, because uh, at the moment is our bottleneck. Thank you. That was my talk. If you have any question, I'm here. Otherwise, uh, you can take a cup of coffee and be ready for the next talk. Okay, thank you very much, Nicola, for the talk. There are some questions, actually, they are popping in at the moment. Let's start with the first question. Why do you rely on CSV as a data format? Why not using Parquet, et cetera? That's a, that's a nice uh, 
real question. Actually, we started with CSV uh, because uh, at the beginning, uh, as all modular stuff, there was just the Pivot notebook. So we wanted just to have a CSV. Then later on, we decided to have uh, other steps to uh, let's say make more complex and definite our files and so we just stayed with csv for that motivation and yet the results needs to be a csv actually so we should consider maybe to use parquet in the middle uh, intermediate steps but probably have as a final result a csv anyway okay next question what happens when there are multiple data rows per second what is deciding which line will be kept used Okay, uh, yeah, probably I didn't explain that quite well. Actually, in, in the JSON lines, there are uh, two rows that differ just by the milliseconds. We keep the latest one. And using that trick that I showed you, we are able to take real, really the last one. Uh, the next question goes in the same direction. Why did you decide to use second as the smallest time unit and not okay. like one nanosecond? <laughs> Yeah, okay, because actually uh, our idea was to target a specific scenario in which uh, we analyze the data just on the seconds. Like in some of our machineries, you need to look at the data at the micro, milliseconds, or even nanoseconds. But for this, we just uh, look at the raw data on the machine or any way to the one we recorded in the JSON file. This needed to be something that could be easy manageable and maybe having variables with different polling, uh, uh, frequency. So it will be just a, a big mess, maybe also with value change to have all the milliseconds. It will be quite huge as a data frame. Okay, next question. Do you have end-to-end -end tests to ensure your pipeline works as expected? <laughs> I hope to not receive this question, but since we are, we are actually, besides, uh, before uh, moving to Spark 3, probably we have to add some tests to be sure to don't break uh, everything, anything in production, we should implement that. We investigate some solution. I found something last week, right before the, the presentation, because I was thinking, okay, maybe we should have something uh, uh, in place, but we have to find it. And I, I'm open to suggestion, actually. And we still have time for more questions. So the next is, how do you organize the information when the data is received with latency, one second delayed, but you are recording on second ahead? Wait. How do you organize? So basically, it doesn't arrive uh, just when it's recorded. Actually, we, it's a batch job that analyzes those data. So there is no this problem at the moment. We just refer to the UTC timestamp in the line and we take uh, this as the main source of truth. Okay, and there are not more questions at the moment, but one comment that's also important. <laughs> so very interesting, molto grazie. <laughs> Thank you, grazie a te. And I think this is a perfect, perfect final question or comment. Thank you very much. Uh, someone, wait, wait, wait. Someone is typing. Let's oh. wait. So, <laughs> in the last seconds of the match. No, it's actually also a comment. But I have to copy this one because it's also, it's also a great uh, comment here. Oh no, I can't copy paste. That's horrible. Copy paste is difficult sometimes. <laughs> so that's the. Final. <laughs> Thank you uh, to be here with so me. I can't. I, mean, I can't. I can't say it better. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I mean, you, I can ask where something if anybody has other questions in the breakout room. Thank exactly, you very much. Uh, exactly. And now we have time for some ads. Um,